Hallo. Huh? Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the morning, friends and family. If that intro didn't give it away, we were at the infamous Dave Kaufman's reptile room, which is also next to his gotcha. kitchen, which has a beautiful, lovely photo of some beautiful, lovely people. Aww. 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 Yeah, if this is one of your first times to our video, or your very first time instead of just one of those first times, two times a week we put out videos. One of them is beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece. One of them is uncut. <laughs> And this one is uncut. Dave, what have you to show us on such a fine, beautiful day as this? So, welcome to my temporary digs while we shop for a house. A uh, little uh, segue here. We have um, been filming a lot over the past couple of days here in Minneapolis. We are both extremely exhausted. We have been, uh, I don't know, let's just say we've probably gotten four hours of sleep in the past 48 hours, so we're a little tired. But not too tired to show you some awesomeness over here. I think that sounds about accurate. All right. Uh, let's see here, I got an iguana over there, tortoise, I don't know, whatever, bull snakes over here, eggs hatching over here, um, lots of ball pythons in the uh, freedom breeder rack over here. And that's it. And, oh, See you guys later. My gecko's over there. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, almost right. got the geckos. One yeah. second. This is actually pretty nice. Take a look at this. Beautiful. But it's the daytime, so I don't think we're actually going to be able to see any geckos. Uh, there are no geckos. I don't see any. Oh, well, I see a tail. I see a tail hiding back there. But uh, gargoyle geckos, crested geckos, love them. Gotta have them. Baby, uh, baby's up here from this year. Oh, there's a little baby up there. Hello, little baby that I can barely see. Those hatched out a couple months ago. May, well, maybe a month ago, I don't know. I'll have to look at my records. But over here in this corner is where I spend most of my time when I am not editing. This little character right here is the world famous Ares. Ares loves to dance with me, except when there's a camera in your face. Ares is my little rhino iguana that I have raised since he was just in the egg and just a little baby. And he is just my little sweetheart. So we do a lot of training with this iguana. And what you're seeing right now is actual training. We don't take them out. We just have maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes of interaction. I won't for this video because it's only a, not a 20 minute video. But you just go in and you interact with him in his enclosure, in his environment. And uh, he just learns that, you know, every time that you take him out, he's not under attack and whatever he thinks. And uh, this is the way to kind of train your iguana to be a calm little puppy dog. See, look at that. Look at this little puppy. I love this guy. Such a good guy with a big old belly. With a big fat belly. So that's Aries. <laughs> Down here. That was like half like hilarious, but also half very serious. That was interesting. I am half serious, half hilarious. All the time. Okay, so Makes sense. <clears throat> this is our uh, Super Dwarf retic from uh, Reach Out Reptiles. This is a Parthenogenesis snake, so there was no father. There were uh, a female that had three eggs. Those eggs were viable. This is one of those three eggs. She was kind of expected to live for maybe six months tops. And now she is uh, two and a half years old, maybe? I'll have to look at my records, but she is doing wonderfully. Nice and big do, and plump. And Do you want to take her out for a closer look? We can. She has, a, she has a bit of a food response. So what I, I've heard that about every single every animal. Retic, right? No, about literally every animal that we've been on on this trip. Oh, really? 
So what we do is we don't hook her, we just touch her on the head, like this. You just touch her around the head. Sometimes she doesn't understand what's going on. But this communicates that there is no rat. It is not time to be fed. And then we can just kind of get a little hook here and make sure that she understands what's happening. Oh, she well, if you look in here, she's wrapped around the cork. So I don't think we're actually going to take her fully out. But we will just let her kind of explore on her own as she comes out. And uh, so that is how we work with a retic to show her that it is not feeding time and uh, then we can go in very gently and very slowly and touch her and now she realizes that she's not being fed that it's now time to be handled and therefore she is not going to be as food aggressive as if she would if we didn't do these little extras with her so a lot of people keep retics I don't know maybe just for the sake of having a retic but they don't do any of, and that, well, and that uh, retic becomes quite aggressive. And, well, that's because people don't understand that the, re the reason why your retic is aggressive is because every time you open that cage, you're feeding that retic. And uh, every time you open the cage, he's going to have that food response because that's the only time that he sees this door opening is feeding time. And if you uh, work with them and open the door and touch them and work with them, they are not going to associate that cage door opening with food. So it kind of calms them down a bit. It sounds about right. Now, did you guys concur? Go down in the comments below. If you concur with what Dave has just said about retics and food training response, so leave a comment down below and, and say that you concur. If you do not concur, go down and leave that comment and we'll have lots of fun. Me and my snake hook. Okay, so down here we have our Burmese Mountain Tortoise. Uh, and he is the he's the funniest eater. He will eat around the banana all the time, nibble at the banana, as you can see, and then save the banana for uh, later and then, you know, kind of have him in that snack. Now, when he does this sort of stuff, what I'll do is I will take his food dish out with the banana and put it somewhere in the room and then just simply open this. Well, we don't need the snake hook for that. But I will just open his cage and he can wander as he so chooses. And by hiding his banana somewhere in the room, it gives him a lot of enrichment because it's kind of a treasure hunt for him to go find the food, as if he would naturally do that in the wild. You know, wander around the mountains of Burma looking for food. Sorry, everybody, if you heard that, that was uh, Clint texting me just now. I will read that when we are done here. So, uh, if you are watching my channel, then you know this snake, which is an awesome snake that I hatched out here a couple of years ago. This is the very famous Pandora. So, this is a snake that I hatched out... Oh, good God, I'm going to have to check my records. I can't remember. Two or three years ago, anyway. It was a... 2018. Was it 2018? 2018. It was 2018. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you read my notes. Um, anyway, so this was uh, bred by a pastel clown to a pied. Neither of them were het for each other, but yet this really funky monkey hatched out. And it looks very pastel clown up on top. But then you come back down here towards the tail, and it's normal. So this is a very awesome paradox. And uh, she is going to be ready to uh, be introduced to her first male this year. And I'm very excited to see what comes out. I do not think this is genetic. I think this is just a paradox. That, that's pretty exciting, Dave. And I'm, I'm pretty curious about it, because I got the text from Clint, too, so I'm a little curious about it. Just curious enough to do it on this uncut video and check out what's going on. It looks like, uh, Are you checking? yeah, I just want to check. Oh, no, nah. <laughs> uh, Clint. Clint says, Clint says, listen, Dave, if you want to criticize me, fine, I can take it. That wasn't to me, okay, yeah, but it does. I'll be darned if I stand by and let you talk that way about Applebee's. Applebee's. Don't ever talk about Applebee's like that again, or whoever Clint was. Applebee's is McDonald's with full service, <laughs> okay, so moving on. Uh, in this here baiter, we've got some eggs hatching. We had two hatch this morning, 
So this was a clutch that I was trying to prove out a female that I believe is double het lavender pied. Obviously, I proved her out as pied, but out of five eggs, three go went bad. I don't think they were fertile, but I put them in the incubator anyway, just to, you know, sometimes, you know, those little veins when you candle them are really hard to see. And now we see why they were really hard to see, but uh, this one is, so I bred this, uh, who did I breed this to? Yellow Belly Inchy Pied Het Lavender to a Double Het Lavender Pied. Uh, and we got a Yellow Belly and we got a Normal Pied. So I've proved her out as Pied. Still haven't proved her out as uh, Lavender, but um, well, there's always next year for that. <coughs> Pardon me, I had, to have a, need of medical I had to have a mild coughing fit. Just for a moment. Sorry, right, we'll cut that out. Hey, this is uncut. Uh, who else can I show you? How much time do we have? We have two minutes, Dave, and then I have to go to the airport. Actually, we have one and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. All right, in that case, uh, these are bull snakes. These are awesome. I will just very quickly show you one of my favorite bull snakes. This is a patternless stillwater. It is an extremely rare morph of bull snake. There are only a handful of these in the world, and this girl is one of them. Look at how golden yellow that still water makes that patternless gene. Such a sweetheart. That is a beautiful snake. That is a beautiful snake. All right, so back in you go. These are uh, temporary enclosures for the bull snakes. Uh, I have ordered a huge freedom breeder rack for these guys. Um, when I hatch them out. Obviously they go in the baby rack. When they grow, they get a little bigger tubs. When they get to be adults like this, I then graduate them up into freedom breeders. However, freedom breeder is, well, way behind. So we're waiting on that. So everything is kind of temporary in here. And that's the end of this video. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, yeah. actually they are, yeah, the, 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 not, the wait times nothing are insane. Ag nothing no. against Freedom Breeder. You no, know, it's true. If, the wait times they, are insane right now. If they have that wait time, that means that they're a really good, popular company. But That is what's happening. Uh, let's wrap this up on this oh, clutch. Yes. This is a clutch that I just hatched out. Just uh, uh, Let's see here. They hatched out on 7.30, so just a couple of weeks ago. These guys have already had their first meal, but this was a GHI Inchi Mojave to a pied. And so, as you can see, these are GHI Mojaves, but they're also Inchi, and this is how to tell that they're Inchi. Look at the pattern that's coming up the side. That is what Inchi does to GHI Mojave is it creates pattern on the side, whereas a GHI Mojave does not have this pattern. So these are GHI Mojave inches that are het pied. And here, come on, sweetheart. Hey, you go back in there. You unwrap your sister. There we go. That is a GHI Mojave pied. Come here, baby. Ball pythons just sit and be a ball, except mine. But uh, that is a GHI Mojave uh, pied and uh, sometimes they get really dark uh, saddles in the light saddles so I'm waiting to see uh, with each shed I'm expecting those dark saddles in the middle of the lighter saddle saddles to get darker and darker uh, and then we've got uh, that's just a normal pied that came out here is a GHI pied that is very very nice and compared to a GHI Inchi Pied, very, very nice, and another GHI Pied. So not too bad of odds with this clutch. Fantastic. But yeah, these are awesome. I think we have time for one more clutch because this we just got to show this. I mean, we technically don't, but, we but don't. we're going to show it anyway. This is uncut. Uh, these, are my, uh, these are for my Orange Dream. Uh, pieds. These are Enchi Orange Dream Pieds. Enchi obviously adds more pattern to a pied than, let's say, just an Orange Dream Pied. So you can see what Enchi does to pied. But I had really good odds with this. This was an Enchi Orange Dream Het Pied to a pied. And look at that. Everybody came out Orange Dream. So Orange Dream Enchi, Orange Dream Enchi, Orange Dream Pied, Orange Dream Enchi Pieds. Awesome. Not a bad clutch. Yeah, that's not fantastic. a bad clutch. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for watching this wonderful video of touring Dave Kaufman's Reptile Corner here. Uh, I appreciate it. 
I appreciate it. Actually, dude, it's always so much fun. We get to hang out. I'm so glad we're friends. Me too. Uh, we, seriously, too. Like we have wait. It's like too much fun. Um, we're not going to share that part of the video. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, if you guys are for some reason not subscribed to Dave Kelfman's Reptile Adventures or his fishing channel or his brand new fishing channel, brand new fishing channel. Yes, by the way, uh, then there will be a link down in the description below where you can go find those channels, check them out, and love them as much as I do, and then. Do all the things that you're supposed to do, which are, you know, like this video if you loved it, dislike it if you think that Dave's too tall. Um, if you think he's the right exact height, leave a comment down below and let us know so. Oh, look, he's, he's changeable, so you should be able to leave a comment no matter what. My height is all dependent on how much my knees bend. <laughs> you guys, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. We'll see you in the next video, and it may or may not have Dave Kaufman in it as well. So we'll have to see, won't we? Yes, we will. All right. You guys take care. Aloha. Nice.